بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى عليه وصحبه وسلم أما بعد هبت في الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته حياكم الله uh, A question was asked and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and the questioner amin ya rabbil alameen about being in a situation in which a person is living in a household especially for for women this can be even more challenging living with uh, relatives that are not practicing or relatives that may not be muslim whatever the case may be that their habits and characteristics are differ differ, differ with the characteristics and traits of the mu'mineen in that what islam has called to good they forbid and what islam forbids they deem as good and so in a situation like this firstly if a person is able to move on and move to their own residence or what or what have you but i know for the young people especially if they're really youthful uh in their teens or what have you that this is may not be an option but if one is able to and financially and all the other challenges with that or being a single sister or whatever the case may be or sisters with children whatever the scenario is strive your best to if you can remove yourself from that environment but if that is not possible then you do the best that you can in that environment and that reminds me of the hadith of rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam just as i was speaking when the Prophet ﷺ said, and this is the hadith of Abi Sa'id al-Khudri, رضي الله تعالى عنه, قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول, I heard the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم saying, من راء منكم منكر فليغيره بيد فإن لم يستطع فبلسانه فإن لم يستطع فبقلبه وذلك أدعف إيمان. Ruahu Muslim. This is a hadith in Sahih Muslim. And the Prophet ﷺ said, if you see an evil, then change it with your hands. If you're unable to do so, then change it with your tongue. Speak out against it. And if you're unable to do that, then change it with your heart, and that's the weakest form of faith. So first and foremost, we have to take that qa'ida, usuliya, on board. We have to take this very important principle this is like qawaid. This isn't just, this is a, a qaida, but it's it's full of qawaid, far'iyah. It's, it's full of so many other principles. SubhanAllah, that hadith alone, we, it, you know, could be a big dars, darasa. But, but how do we apply this to what we're talking about? Well, for one, you're seeing all kind of munkar. Maybe backbiting, maybe ghiba, and namima, maybe, uh, uh, cursing people, maybe zina, maybe uh, alcohol and drugs in your household. This is something which is, for us in the West, this is unfortunately, is, is a common thing that we have to deal with. Even I will say, not just in the West, subhanAllah, you could be in Yemen. This could be the case. There are plenty of Yemenis that are drunkards and, and, and on drugs, not just the qat, but also, you know, there are alcoholics. There are people who sell their daughters. There are all kind of crazy stuff going on all over the Muslim world. So we don't need to restrict it to the West. Wallahum asan. Or having parents that molest you. This is all over the world. And it's a horrendous, uh, a horrendous crime. So, Ahabatifillah, in light of that qaida, in light of that uh, that hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what did our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said? فَإِن لَمْ If you're unable to, so, for one, if you are unable to speak, maybe it's your parents. You can't reprimand your parents. You might be able to advise them, depending on your relationship with your parents, how they accept advice, you know, how, you, how you, your personal relationship with. You might be able to speak in a humble tone. You might be able to, to, to advise them, and they may accept it. They may not. They may be really harsh and on the opposite side of the spectrum. They may smack you in the mouth if they're that kind of parent. So the point is, so if you're unable to do that for a variety of reasons, I mean, uh, uh, sorry, that's changing with your hands. You're not able to do that 
<laughs> with your parents. Almost never. I can never think of hardly a situation where that's going to be the case. But Allah knows best. So that, so you're unable to do that. So then with your tongue. So that's the muratib I was discussing. So if you're not able to advise them in a nice gentle way, and they are not accepting or it's going to cause a greater harm by doing so, then you're not able to. So then you move to the next maratib uh, of, uh, of inkar and munkar. So you, uh, 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 you will hate it in your heart. But along with that hating in your heart, that means you, can, you have some power. And that's the beauty of Islam. I want you to take this, anyone's listening to this, and I hope this spreads just to, so we, we, we need to get this in our, men, you know, embrace this in our mentality. Islam is practical. Islam is just not books. We, we just don't read books and that, khalas, everything is just going to fit in this beautiful box. La, Islam is practical. If we study those books in detail, meaning the book of Allah and the sunnah of the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa madhab as-salaf as-salih, You'll find so much, but that means it's gone in fil ilm. That means you have a, a strength in knowledge and, and in those sciences. And you have ilm wa fiqh wa basira. It means you have understanding, you have insight, and you have wisdom. Not everybody's, some people have knowledge and they don't have any wisdom. Some people have basira, they don't have a lot of knowledge. Yeah, so there's a lot of different things going on there. And that comes with study. <coughs> with talab al ilm. <coughs> so, Understanding that Islam is practical. Shamil Kamil. Believe that in your itqad. That's a part of creed. That's a part of the creed of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. La shak. That's from the usul of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. That you know and understand and believe Islam is Kamil Shamil. It's, 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 it includes everything. It's, it's practical. It's all, it, it's perfect. It, it has our solution. And, but it's just up to us to understand Islam. And it's up to us to know how to practice and know, look at the Masali and the, the Mufasid and, you know, to have that knowledge to be able to, those tools. So, because Islam is complete and accepting that, understanding that, then know that there's going to be times you're going to be uncomfortable. For example, the world doesn't exist and you can't just walk through the world and maybe you, maybe you don't want to fight, but there may become a time someone's going to threaten your life and you're going to have to fight. Or there's going to be, you know, there's so many imperfect scenarios, but you've got to rise to the occasion. And that's the same way with the Islam. So you're going to be in an environment being someone's going to offer you pork. Where are you going to explode like a tomato? Boom. La, you just couldn't handle it. No, you're going to deal with it. You're going to have to deal with that in a real way. No, thank you. I'm a Muslim. I don't do that. You know, what, whatever. Uh, there's going to be all kind of muharramat. There's all going to be all kind of things that are offered to you that's in your face, that's around you. And you just have to deal with it. So in the situation with the parents or the family or what have you, that you can politely refuse if there's some whatever, you know. Or maybe someone in your house has a drug addiction. Could be your parents, could be whatever. You... Uh, and you don't have the ability, you, you maybe, maybe they'll accept some advice. And that's all you can do. And of course, you're not going to sit in the room while they're smoking weed. You're not going to sit there while they're having the drink. So you're going to remove yourself from those environments when the sin is taking place. And then you can come back when it's not taking place. If you see that they're watching Muharram. I had a scenario where a relative, to bother me, I come in the home, he, he puts on pornography. He puts, bam, on the te TV. Okay, just to bother me and try to hurt me. And I was like, come on, man, you already know. I'm not into, you know, I, and he wants to ridicule. So that, I have to leave that environment. I know that that individual, I can't be around because he tries to hurt me. He doesn't respect me enough. He wants to, to harm me, to cause discomfort, especially with regards to my dean. So in those types of scenarios, you need to remove yourself if you have the option. But if you're in a household and you're stuck in that scenario, then at least you could try to remove yourself from the room. You just do, you, what is Allah, uh, what should you do? Ittaqullah mustata'tum. Fear Allah as much as possible. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Almighty to accept our good, forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam. Ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.